And now here is an example where you can see classic honeycomb pattern, trapping a fat and conventional DFSP at the side. And then in this sharp cutoff, there's a, a big nodule here of hypercellularity. And as we go closer, those uh, the uh, cellularity uh, is showing this herringbone uh, fascicular pattern. It's making fascicles that are cellular and that are intersecting at acute angles and giving you that, that herringbone or chevron pattern. The cells are bigger, they're more plump, they have more mitoses usually uh, than the uh, thinner cells of conventional DFSP, but they're still usually not pleomorphic. They are bigger and more atypical, but uniformly so, at least in my experience. And so this is what we, what we want to see for fibrosarcomatous transformation. And occasionally I'll see some DFSPs that have areas that are cellular and, and they seem a bit more than regular DFSP, but they don't quite make the herringbone pattern. So I've occasionally had to use some comments in my report that there's an area of increased cellularity that, that could potentially represent early fibrosarcomatous change, but I'm, it's not definitive, basically. I don't know if that's right or not, but I've just seen some that I felt were too much for regular DFSP, but didn't quite get here. And I don't feel like there's like a, a, great, uh, a great answer for what to do with those cases, but I, I have encountered a few like that before. So, so if you've seen something like that, I, I have as well. All right, so let's stop and talk before we end this, uh, this part of the lecture. Let's talk just for a second about fibrosarcoma, all right? I know this is more of a deep soft tissue thing, but it comes up and I think there's still a lot of confusion. This is a historic term for sarcomas that had a herringbone fascicular pattern of spindle cells, okay? If you look back in the early 1900s, historically fibrosarcoma was like the most common type of sarcoma in soft tissue pathology. But now it is vanishingly rare and most of the things that were called fibrosarcoma in the past, if you, you work them up with modern techniques, uh, including immunohistochemistry and molecular, we find that most of them end up being something else, okay? DDF liposarc, synovial sarcoma monophasic type, cellular schwannoma, cellular fibrous histiocytoma or cellular DF, et cetera, et cetera, okay? I've seen melanoma with herringbone pattern even. So uh, most things that have the herringbone pattern are not fibrosarcoma. So my recommendation, oh, sorry, I had a slide for that. So there's some, the same thing I just told you. So, you know, in the WHO bone and soft tissue uh, tumor book, adult type fibrosarcoma is still listed as an entity. So, I mean, by the book, it still technically exists, but I'll tell you this, if it exists, it is vanishingly rare and it's a diagnosis I have personally never made. In 10 years of practice as a soft tissue pathologist, I have never called something fibrosarcoma NOS or adult type fibrosarcoma. So uh, I've seen other people more expert than me do it, but for me, I feel like I'd rather just say spindle sar cell sarcoma, undifferentiated spindle cell sarcoma or something like that if I really can't tell because I just feel like uh, it's so vanishingly rare that if you make this diagnosis, you're usually statistically you're gonna be wrong. Okay, that's my viewpoint at least. So here's the times that in modern soft tissue pathology, these are times that it's okay to call something fibrosarcoma, okay? Fibrosarcoma is DFSP, like we just saw, or some people use the term fibrosarcoma arising in DFSP. That's kind of an alternative nomenclature. And that's what we just looked at in the last case. Infantile fibrosarcoma, which is a sarcoma that looks herringbone pattern and cellular, and it's in infants, and it is a translocation uh, sarcoma that has a, a gene fusion of ETV6 and TREK3. So it's a very specific, molecularly defined uh, tumor in babies that's quite rare, but has a very good prognosis, so it's important to diagnose it um, appropriately and correctly. And then also, of course, if fibrosarcoma is part of a proper specific tumor name, right, myxofibrosarcoma or sclerosing epithelial fibrosarcoma, these are not descriptive terms. They are actually proper names for a specific type of tumor um, that probably uh, neither of which is related to, you know, the, this uh, so-called adult type fibrosarcoma, okay? Sclerosing epithelial fibrosarcoma is probably on a spectrum or at least somehow closely related to, to a low-grade fiber myxoid sarcoma. And myxofibrosarcoma sarcoma is more like a kind of a myxoid variant of undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma or, or something along those lines. So to me, in my opinion, if it's not one of those three things, I basically don't use the term fibrosarcoma. That would be my advice to you, but I'll let you decide if you want to take it or leave it.